Joining us right now, former U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva. Hey, Joe, how are you? I'm fine. Happy Columbus Day. Let us all celebrate. Oh, see, you're so politically incorrect, but you are in it. With a name like DeGeneva. Exactly. He's an Italian-American, so you're, you're, you're proud of Christopher Columbus today? Absolutely. And let me just tell you something. This is a fascinating story. You know, in 1792, the first U.S. city uh, celebrated the 300th anniversary of Columbus. A bunch of U.S. cities did it. And believe it or not, Tammany Hall got involved, and they established something called the Columbus Order, which became Tammany Hall. Uh, it's really a fascinating story because Tammany was a Native American symbol. Oh, wow. And they mixed the, the Columbus Order, which became Tammany Hall, mixed, mixed, mixed the symbol of uh, Columbus and Tammany, the Native American, as a symbol of American separateness from Europe. And interesting. Really fascinating. Oh, the nativists. Yeah. Sure. I remember that from the, uh, from the uh, Gangs of New York movie. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, hey, Joe, uh, moving from there, I, I want to ask you a hypothetical, if I could. Imagine, if you will, an incumbent uh, senator in Virginia who uh, finds out that uh, in Richmond, uh, the d- a Democrat who holds the linchpin to the Democrat majority in the Senate is about to retire. And uh, he calls up his son on the phone and says, hey, you know, uh, maybe we can sweeten the deal here. Uh, maybe we can offer your daughter... Uh, or your sister, excuse me, the daughter of this senator, a uh, job in a a corporation that I helped woo to the state, or maybe uh, we could even find her a job on the federal bench. Now, uh, he never ended up doing anything, but if that senator made that phone call and offered those things, would he be in trouble? Yes, of course he would, and and he should be in as much trouble as the Republicans who are being investigated for offering the state senator, Senator Puckett, uh, a, uh, a job for his daughter if he decided to leave the Senate. Yeah, I should point out this isn't a hypothetical. That was Senator Mark Warner, incumbent, who's up for re-election in three weeks. And yeah. Washington Post revealed, uh, Joe DeGeneva, that he did make that phone call. Yes, and, I, and I'm, I have to give the Post a lot of credit for being uh, at least minimally fair about this. But the real issue is the U.S. attorneys in Virginia. What are they going to do about it? We have learned that this fellow, the, the son of Senator Puckett, was in fact interviewed uh, by federal investigators, so we know that this is now known by them. Uh, if these guys are smart in these two U.S. attorneys office, they're going to drop this thing because it's not worthy of a federal investigation. But I can tell you this. Really? Hold on. Let's stop, stop right there. Why? Because it's just not the kind of thing people should be spending their time on. People make job offers like this all the time. We've done too much to criminalize criminal uh, political behavior in this country. We need to stop at the water's edge. At the same time, We need to recognize that this wasn't some coup d'etat by Republicans. It was a coup de stay by Democrats as well. And Mark Warner, I have to say this for Mark Warner, he's never done anything as a United States senator. At least he did this. (laughs) Well, yeah, but I mean, as soon as the the Republicans were somehow implicated, there was, let's get the Justice Department involved. Right, right. I'm all for it. I think the senator ought to be in front of a grand jury before the election, and everybody ought to know about it. No, but let me just tell you something. Yeah, gonna this, is, this is stuff that happens every day. It got the light of day because when the Democratic uh, you know, Party decides it wants to investigate something, and boy, did they make a big mistake. Look who they caught up in it. The Democrats were so quick to want an investigation. I say it should come to its natural conclusion, which is no prosecution. But, and Senator Warner should be defeated as a result. That's the natural, that's the way this should end, not with an indictment, with Warner's defeat. But didn't we learn from the Bob McDonald trial that there doesn't have to be an explicit quid pro quo? If you're being helpful to somebody that's for right. political purposes. I, and, and you will recall from the beginning of that case, I had said that when it was all over, the, the ultimate case is going to be about whether or not there were, in fact, official acts done for Johnny Williams. And the answer is there were no official acts under the law. The U.S. attorney overreached case never should have been prosecuted and you and you know what if they prosecute this one they'll be worse than i thought they were all right look i want to change topics here uh senator pat roberts who's up for re-election in kansas has been quoted as saying on, on a radio talk show that he believes valerie jarrett valerie jarrett close associate of the president of the united states probably his most valued uh, associate there at the white house uh, was deeply involved in the IRS scandal, uh, working, I guess, with uh, Lois Lerner uh, to investigate these conservative organizations. Well, there's no doubt that Valerie Jarrett is at the center of all White House activity regarding policy, personnel, presidential appointments. She is more important than Mr. McDonough, the chief of staff. 
She is a personal close friend of both the President and the First Lady. Uh, she met them in Chicago in 1991 and helped Michelle get a job. She is the big mocker in the White House. She would have been knowledgeable of all the activities involving the IRS. Regrettably, she is, it's very difficult to subpoena somebody like that because she has the type of job uh, that both Republicans and Democrats have tried to protect from testifying on Capitol Hill because they are so close to a president. But I can assure you, if her emails and text messages, if they are still extant, because they seem to erase them with great regularity yep. in this administration. She, she has to be at the center of this and a lot of other things. And, and by the way, she's at the center of the non-response on Ebola. Do you think all of this is happening? They're trying to keep the president so far away from this because they know it's a no, it's no win. And as a result, there's been no leadership from the White House on Ebola. There's been no systematic designation of someone in charge. And we've ended up with the same type of political correctness from the CDC and Tom Frieden that we got originally way back when HIV and AIDS first came on the scene. Nothing but political correctness from the CDC, trying to make sure that they did not stigmatize the uh, homosexual community in the United States and around the world. Big mistake helped increase the problem, and they're doing the same thing today. Hey, Joe, I know you focus on Maryland politics in a big way, and uh, you know, we're three weeks away from that election, and you've seen those polls tightening as much as we have. The whole country has noticed those polls tightening. What do you think of Anthony Brown's uh, situation here in Maryland? Well, I think what's happening is he's a lackluster candidate. Uh, he's basically a know-nothing, do-nothing candidate. You know, nice-looking guy, you know, can construct a compound sentence. Uh, but, but beyond that, he's never done anything in his life. And the one thing that he was responsible to, the Maryland road rollout of the health system yeah. uh, uh, website, was a disaster. And then he ran from it. Uh, the, you know, it, it, he is not an inspiring figure. Uh, it is theoretically possible that Larry Hogan could beat him. The anti-tax campaign that Hogan has run has struck a nerve in sure Maryland has, yeah. because, you know, it finally got into the public domain that O'Malley, whose numbers are really down in public polling because his legacy is taxation, this is not good for O'Malley. It's not good for Brown. There is a theoretical chance that the revulsion to 40 or more tax increases during O'Malley's time and the exodus of businesses from Maryland because of those taxes and the anti-business government of people attitude of people like Mike Miller, the president of the Senate, right. who is nothing but a political thug, that is having an effect on Brown. Plus, Brown is a lousy candidate. Yeah. All right, Joe, we got to leave it there, but uh, we're, you, we're three weeks out. We've got much more to say. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about that race in just